Welcome back to the channel. I'm Forrest and this is how I approached Guilty Gear. I never played Guilty Gear before Revelator 1, so this is an insight in how I learned how to play this game. For the record, for those of you who don't know who I am, I have the Platinum for Guilty Gear Exad Revelator 1 and this is probably my favourite fighting game of PlayStation 4. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to play tutorial 1 through 7. Once you've completed that, you need to do it again under 10 minutes. Now I did this myself, so if I'm not going to tell you to do something that I didn't do. The reason why you want to do that is because it improves your muscle memory and it improves what retention you're actually getting, like you're understanding what's going on because you'll be getting faster at doing it. I don't care how many times it takes you to do it under 10 minutes, just keep doing it. Once you've done that, then play all five mini games until you completed all five of them. Okay, that will probably take you quite a while for a new player who's never played fighting games before. Now, the next step is to hop into missions. There are 52 universal mission applications and 50 matchup knowledge. Complete as many of these as you possibly can. To pass, you need to do three out of five. So let's show you one or two, just as an example. So we'll start with something relatively easy. Universal one. This is the only fighting game that teaches you stuff like this. So they want you to forward dash and then close range triangle, long range triangle. Wasn't close enough. There you go. You can see my inputs as well. Don't mash in this game because this is not a game that you can get away from mashing. This one requires you to intercept. So this is teaching you about distance. So once you've done as many of these as you possibly can, it is time to go into training mode. Training mode is very important. So before you even think about choosing a character that looks cool or you want to pick up, you need to play the easier character first. So you've got a few choices, you can play Soul Bad Guy or you can play Kai Kiske. Um, Kai is like the Ryu of this game and Soul is like the Ken of this game. So we'll pick Soul. Now there's something to bear into consideration. You've got technical and stylish layout. If you're a very very new player and you want to have fun and just like get used to the game and see how combos work. Play stylish mode. I personally did not play stylish. I went straight to technical. And I'll, I'll explain why once um, we load this up. Because there's a lot of archetypes in fighting games and Guilty Gear is no different, right? So, you've got 25 characters and they all play very differently. Now, technical mode and stylish is a, a world of difference. It's the difference between night and day. So, if you go to command list, you can see the inputs for special moves require Quarter circle forward, quarter circle back, half circle forward, um, show you can motions and such. If I switch the stylish layout, look how simplified those controls are. It's basically a special button plus a direction input to do special moves. 
okay? To do something like an ultra combo is the special punch button plus punch kick or dust. That is very a lot easier than doing half circle back forward and heavy slash. There's something to take into consideration though. If you play stylish mode layout, your character will take 20% additional damage on top of their defense rating. So what does that mean? In layman's terms, take Kai Kiske as an example. If I'm not mistaken, Kai has a defense multiplier of 1.00, I think. I know Sol does. So that means if you do a 100 damage combo on Kai, it will do 100 damage. Now all characters have different defense ratings. So if you played a stylish Kai and I did a 100 combo damage to your, to your character, if you're in stylish mode, you're taking 120 points of damage, not 100 if he was in technical mode. Now that's very important, right? Because I'll show you an example. If I do um, square X triangle circle, that does 67 points of damage to Kai Kiske. Now, if I switch to Chip, Chip has a lot lower defense multiplier. So he bleeds basically. If he gets hit, he bleeds. Now remember that 67 points there. I'll do exactly the same combo on technical chip. 86. 86. And that's not even a hard combo to do. That's just a Gatling. And that did 86 damage to chip because he bleeds. If that was a Star Wars chip, that would do over 100. So let's go back to Kai. If anybody has any questions, leave them in the comments, by all means. So, before you do anything else, learn your normal attacks. From a standing, crouching, and aerial position. So, we'll start with neutral, standing. So, you've got five attack buttons in Guilty Gear. Punch, kick, slash, heavy slash, and dust. If you're observant, you'll notice the punch, kick, slash, and heavy slash are actually color coded to correspond with the face buttons of your control pad. So, square is uh, whatever, like pinkish. So that is punch, kick is blue, triangle is green, circle is uh, red, heavy slash, uh, dust is actually assigned to R1, but you can uh, custom control if you wish. Now you can do these crouching. And you can do them neutral jumping. So what is the difference between this game? If you diagonally jump, the input does not change. You don't get a different attack when you aerial jump. For example, neutral jump, heavy slash is this um, attack. If I diagonal jump, it doesn't change. You see? In Street Fighter, it does. Now, you also need to learn about mobility. So you can walk forward and you can walk back. If you double tap forward, you dash. If you double tap back, you back dash. So you can, you can Korean and back dash basically. You can back dash, forward dash. So you want to learn how to do that from both sides of the screen. 
Back dash, forward dash. You need to know how to do that. You can also back dash and forward dash whilst airborne. This is known as air dashing. So you need to be able to do that from uh, 10 times forward and back in a row on both sides of the screen. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to go over special moves. So go to command list. Now these are special attacks for Soul Bad Guy. As you can see, there's a lot more than Street Fighter. You want to be able to do these 10 times in a row from both sides of the screen. If you mess up, start back from 1. So we'll start with just Gunflame. Now remember, you can't have two Gunflames on screen at any point. So just be patient and wait for the Gunflame to end. So once you can do it from one side, do it from the opposite side. You see that shit? My inputs are on so you can see my input display. And you want to do that for all these special moves. Even DPs. Just start DPing people. Again. Do it from both sides of the screen. Because you're not always going to be on the same side, are you, when you're fighting? Learn about grabs. Because grabs are very powerful. Why are grabs powerful? Okay, that one did 56 points of damage, yeah? Characters in Guilty Gear have 420 hit points. Now, when you land a throw we'll get into these later you can actually convert into damage if you've got tension bar or meter resources essentially so once you can throw you need to be able to do air throws something which you don't see much of in street fighter apart from a few select characters once you've done your special moves go back to command list and do the overdrives and then do the instant kill respectively so that's an overdrive we'll do it again just because the first hit missed then you can do dragon install into the same super and as you can see that did a hell of a lot more damage you see the damage there? We'll do it again just to show you. That did 146 points of damage. If you Dragon install, Not grab. That's the one I want. Look at that, 232 damage. Awesome, right? You need to do instant kills as well. So this is Soul's instant kill. Now you'll, if you're observant again, look at his weapon, that's a lighter. It's not a sword, it's a lighter. That's how crazy Guilty Gear is. So once you've done that, the next thing I would highly recommend you do is, you know, you want to try and do some combos, right? Because all the hard work that you've just put in, there needs to be a payoff, right? There has to be some benefit of you doing that. So let's just do some special moves. Let's just do some basic trials just to show you that what I've taught you is actually legit. So, Gunflame, if you did what I told you to do, or I recommended you do, these you can piss. Because you can do them ten times in a row from both sides by now. 
so these you should be able to piss. DP. It's like taking candy from a baby. This is everything I've taught you so far. Dragon install. Now this one is a little bit different. You need to do dragon install. And then you have to do... Sure you can X in the air to grab him. Instant kill is what I taught you. So, you just done all special moves there. Now, you should be able to do some of these as well because they're Gatling combos, right? So, what is a Gatling combo? If you are down a phone number on your phone, there's not much timing required to press the buttons. Like, it's not a strict timing like in Street Fighter because Street Fighter is about linking moves together, which is frame... Um, specific so if you press say four digits on your phone it can you can take that and take it into this game it's like square x triangle circle for example like that or square x triangle down r1 that's a gatlin that's exactly what that is this one you should probably have no problem doing either this one you shouldn't really be have any problem doing you're just doing a sweep and hit confirming into volcanic viper into the knockdown this one I don't think you'll be able to do yet but you might be able to if you know about jump cancelling so let's go over jump cancels in Guilty Gear, you can jump cancel and you can do a lot of things from that. You can super jump as well, or high jump cancel as some people call it. So how do you high jump cancel? Press down and then immediately press forward. You see the smoke? That is a high jump cancel or a HJC. Some people call it super jump canceling. I prefer HJC. So a jump cancel means, let's say crouching circle, yeah? So when you land crouching circle, press up when it hits. You see that shit? Do it again. So you can combo into an air combo, essentially. Like that. If you can learn how to do that, then you should be able to do this combo challenge. So let's do this one. There it is. Easy, right? This one, you should have no problem doing either. It's quite easy. Remember when I told you about air dashes? This is where air dash becomes apparent. So... You can get quite far just from learning what I've taught you. There's Blitz Shield. That one is a bit more complicated. It's two jump cancels in one. Let's go to Dust, because I didn't really explain Dust very well. In fact, I haven't explained it at all. This is going to be probably like a 40 minute video because there's so much to cover. So hopefully people stay for the duration. Um, so what is dust? We've already established you can do that kind of a dust. Now you can also do a raw dust that sends the opponent flying. Now there's two things you can do off that. 
you can hold up after it connects and you'll get like that animation you can also do dust and hold forward and get a different animation so for this specific trial you need to do the up one and then be able to do an aerial combo if you learn how to do this you should be able to do this trial like so let's go back to training mode because if you can do special moves from one character then you can do them with pretty much any character it's universal but there's a lot of a lot of things we still need to establish and you need to learn or you need to be aware of what they do and why they're important So let's talk about Blitz, Blitz Shield Charge Attacks. So if you tap Triangle and Circle, you get like a mini parry if you like. You can hold it and it will actually crumple the opponent if you hold it all the way. So let's do that small thing. That is essentially a focus attack from Street Fighter, only it requires 25% meter. So, if you watch the Street Fighter Primer, you can do stuff like this. That into Sweep. You can also convert into damage. That is exactly a 100 hit combo. 100 damage, I'm, I'm sorry, 100 damage, not 100 hits. That'd be fucking nuts. You see that shit? Just to prove the point, let's go to Chip again. Because now I know how to do a 100 hit combo, right? So, this shows that I'm not bullshitting you, okay? So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on Chip. 127. 127. That's crazy. That did a 100 to Kai Kiske. So, shield is very important because you can do a lot of things from Blitz Shield. You can Blitz Shield, Dust, and then do an aerial combo. Or you can do the other version. So you can Blitz Shield, Dust, and run forward. Okay? You can also do, like, DP, Knockdown, and then try to apply pressure. So you need to be aware of that. There's also burst in the top left hand screen. So what is a burst? Because Street Fighter does not have burst. It's basically like a get off me kind of thing. You can also use it to enhance the damage of a, one of your overdrives. Generally there's two types, there's a blue burst and a gold burst. Now gold burst in is that that's a gold burst so if i take my meter off reset the situation if i land a gold burst i get all my meter for free and it sends the opponent flying to the other side of the screen now if i'm getting hit and i do a burst it becomes a blue burst now if your burst connects, you actually get a little bit of your burst meter back. You see I got the B. Because once you use your burst, it takes a while to get that burst back because it slowly regenerates all the time. But it does carry over from round to round. In Guilty Gear, your tension meter does not carry over like in Street Fighter. So any tension bar left over from round is basically refreshed and you start the next round with no meter. 
So, what else do I need to cover? Roman cancels, right? There are three types of Roman cancels. Yellow is the first type. Now this takes 25% of your attention meter, the same as a Blitz Shield. Now, why is Yellow Roman Cancel important? You can do stuff like that. So that was Gunflame, Yellow Roman Cancel. Then you can run and chase that shit down. You see that? So, if we reset the situation, you can, like, crush your opponent up, potentially. Or do an aerial attack while doing a low attack. There's also Red Roman Cancel. Red requires 50% of your attention bar. That's red. So, as soon as you... you your attack connects, you can do a red cancel. You see? Red is generally used for combos. For example, try again. There it is. Eight hits. The final type of Roman cancel is purple. Red takes 50%, so does purple. <clears throat> Excuse me. So purple Roman cancel, if you did a move that's very unsafe and you want to make yourself safe, you do a purple cancel. Like so. There's also something called Negative Edge. You might have seen it a few times. Negative Edge means if you continuously backdash, you get danger, negative penalty, and that would take your entire meter bar away. So let's demonstrate that purpose. Where's the uh, meter? Backdash. I, I lost all my meter. Did you see that shit? Now, the next thing you need to know is danger time. I think that only counts when uh, the opponent's attacking me, I think. What danger time is, for a set period of time on the screen, for 10 seconds. Every attack will be classed as a mortal counter and will do ridiculous points of damage. It's like a comeback thing, but it's very hard to initiate. So that's something you need to be aware of. So is RISC level. Now you're probably thinking, what the fuck is RISC? If I set the dummy to block, You'll notice there's a little bar that is filling up when I'm when my opponent is blocking. So the way it works is once that reaches 50%, it begins to flash. So if I hit my opponent now and he didn't block, I would do a mortal counter. And he would take a lot more damage. See what I mean? I'm trying to think what else I need to explain. Tension, sight burst. Also, if you're a new player, press triangle and view these facts and questions because they're very, very, very useful. Like, what's a Roman cancel, dude? Press that and they teach you what Roman cancel is, how much bar they take how to use them, when to use them, a lot of applications that they teach you. Like, yeah, you need to take advantage of that. 
just show you a few of these. What kind of characters are there I can use? Standard type characters, power types, speed, uh, mix up heavy characters, grapplers, you know, stuff like that. So once you've done that and you're very comfortable, you can go back into challenge mode and try and do some more advanced combos. Now, once you've become proficient at using Soul Archive, then you should pick a character that you want to learn how to play. So if you like charge characters and you don't have the best execution, pick Leo White Fang. If you want to pick a character that is more technical, that is a charge character, pick Mei or Venom. If you want to be a mix-up character and your execution is very, very good, pick Chip. If you want to play a grappler, pick Potemkin. There's a, a character for every type of play. If you want to pick a juggle character or someone with a lot of mix-ups, play Heion. You can play Ramothal, you can play Raven, Command Grabs. There's a character to suit every situation and every playstyle. If you like parrying people, play Biken. If you like ninjas, play Answer or Chip. Because that's what I did. I learned how to play him because he's got link combos. He's not like the, the rest of the cast. Then and only then, should you try to pick up a character that you want to play. So, um, let's say you want to play Leo, because, you know, Leo's fucking badass, right? So if you want to play Leo White Fang, go through his trial mode. I will do primers for the characters that I know how to use in the future. For characters that are easier to pick up and characters that I like to use. So, there's something you need to take into consideration for a new player. If you're doing a charge, bo a charge motion and you're doing this, people know you're charging. People know you're doing, you're doing a charge. The correct way is to do down back. and then do the motion. That's the correct way of doing a charge. Okay, we'll do some of these trials. You also have to wait for a set period, which I do not dig. He's got wreckers. So just go through their challenges. Now remember, most of these you should be able to do quite easily because of the practice that you've put into the game. The anime! Instant kill. One thing that you need to take into consideration that I forgot to mention real quickly. If you do your instant kill, in fact I'm going to show you. If you land your instant kill, then it finishes the round obviously because it's an instant KO, right? But there is a penalty if you miss. Or if the opponent blocks it. You can combo into it, but it's quite situational and it requires difficulty. So, 
If I try and do my instant kill, why am I not losing it? Is that because I've got infinite stuff on my shit? Oh, that's why. That's why. Let's do it. If I miss, where's my tension bar at? You lose it. So you no longer can do blitz shield tax. You can no longer roaming cancel. You can no longer do overdrives. You lose the ability for the entire round. So it's a very risk reward kind of system about instant kills. Thank you very much for watching if you've stayed this long and stay tuned for future videos. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace.